politician in his speech as a yesterday that um, as far as Akwaibom State is concerned in terms of power, that is about only 5% of the villages within Akwaibom State that are yet to be linked to the national grid. And that means in no distant time, uh, power would be uh, a thing of, you know, w wouldn't be a thing of issue compared to before now. Now, would you say, uh, going by the present situation, don't forget the fact that um, within Akwaibom State, a lot of persons have been complaining about lack of power. A lot of persons within um, Akwaibom State, last week we had persons from Aka, Aka Road, we had persons from um, uh, Udoye Duok, we had persons from different locations in Akwaibom State complaining of either not having enough power or not having power at all or being uh, exorbitantly charged in the tariff, the electricity tariff that they have to pay. Uh, would you say the government has um, is clear on the stand or the government has been able to achieve what it has stated? 5% left to be connected. Thank you so very much. I want to appreciate uh, this is a very good question. And uh, is, uh, in the issue of Akwaibom State, I, I make bold to tell you that this is the first time the government of Akwaibom State have uh, appointed a professional, a technocrat, a man that knows the way without in the power sector, in the person of Engineer Mayen Etukuro. Engineer Mayen Etukuro came into the picture after his appointment and have revolutionized, have changed the power sector in Akwaibom State. He knows the honors from the power station in Parenin that give power to Parenin, give power to Ikorobasi, give power to Eke Ona. Engineer Mayen Etudo have been a wrong peg in a wrong hole. That is why I make bold to say that the power sector in Akwaibom State have improved tremendously during this administration. In line with what the governor said, I want to believe it may be less than 5% of people, of city, of villages, of local government in Akwaibom State that is remaining to be connected. Power, to, power is everywhere. Everywhere you go, you see light. Even in my village that used to be no light, when Udom Emmanuel came in and appointed me to go to in that sector, we had light. We wrote to the government that we need a transformer. And within a few days, transformer was supplied to my community. Not just supply. The government supplied transformer install transformer and then commission now now uh, on that is uh, we we know that um your gov your 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 community for instance like you've rightly stated have been you know held by the government yes but we've also had communities within our Kwaibom state who have written several times to the government of the land and are yet to be you know um answered to their request in terms of public power supply we know that uh, not too long ago a, a community at um you know Rugonam, for instance, had the government donating um, a computer system to the people. But then, in as much as those computers were donated to the school, there is no functional electricity within that community. And in our interaction with the community members, one of the things they highlighted as a, a very uh, basic need of the community was the need for public power. And which they said they had approached the federal, the state government and they have written severally and no answer seems to be coming. So in this regard, what would you comment on? I want to, I want to believe that that community from Morogo Nam local government is the community among the 5% that is yet to be connected to power grid. What the people of Akwaibom said need to know concerning power. The office you are directing your request to is very very important i want to believe if any request received in the office of the senior special assistant to the governor on power no request is delayed even if the logistic and the programs for the installation is involved there will be communication there will be interface 
between the office and the community in question. So I want to believe that that sector, that power sector, there have been a tremendous improvement. There have been a, tre a tremendous change of narrative from where it used to be to where it is now. So I want to encourage that community. Create a time and meet with the man who is in charge of the power sector in the, in the person of engineering. And uh, I want, I, I believe your request will be attended to and solution given. All right, let, let's move away from um, looking at the things that the government has said it has done because a lot of parliamentarians, a lot of Okwaibomites will disagree uh, with the government's standpoint that um, if the way to score themselves, they will probably score their performance at 85% and probably would exit that come 2023 when they will be handing over power to the next person who is going to come in to direct the affairs of Okwaibom State. Yes, we know that uh, the present administration has made some some gi uh, giant um, development. Uh, we, we can give it to the government that the aviation sector is working uh, on a, some other project that the government has done. But then, uh, one of the key areas that have been on, on the public space, uh, for instance, today we know that um, widows and um, next of kin of retired primary school teachers are planning to uh, embark on a peaceful protest in, in, in respect to their emolument, which over time had piled up over the years. And um, if you're very conversant with people within our Quibum State and uh, the issue of the widows and next of kin of primary school teachers, these are persons who have served a Quibum State for 35 years within their service years. These are persons whose work, whose sweat, whose blood has been instrumental to building the state economy. And then uh, it is very disheartening to find out that this person, some of them had served the, uh, the state government and get to retire without giving their pension, be, without their gratuity, without every other emolument that should have been given to them. And then some of them even died, leaving those behind. And then their widows or widowers and next of kin are left behind, still fighting for the same cause. And over time, they have written letters to the state government. They have written letters to the head of civils of the, of the state, different um, government establishments that are responsible and saddled with the, the obligation to address their needs. But nothing seemed to have been done about it. I recall speaking with the Nigerian Labour Congress chairman in Aquibom State, and um, he said that, in as much as he's aware that they have been trying to make attempts to speak with the government in order to see a way out of the solution. I recall also speaking with the Nigerian Union of Teachers uh, chairman in Aquibom State, and he was supposed to grant us an interview today, but for, for some reasons that I cannot dispose here, we've had to shift that interview. But then let's look at um, the situation we have on our hands. What would you say is the reason why the government of the land, who seems to prioritize uh, wealth development, who seems to prioritize human capacity uh, development, who says it wants to alleviate poverty in Aquibum State, has not taken priority to paying emoluments of this group of persons who have saved Aquibum State government? Thank you so very much. It is very unfortunate that uh, this, this issue of teachers, retired teachers and emolument payment, is a recurrent, a recurrent decimal in, in a quiet state. You know, this present administration inherited this problem from the previous administration. And you know, a government is a continuum. After this government will come another government. I want to appreciate and uh, the fact that the governor, Mr. Odom Gabriel Emmanuel, over time, have been making, you know, effort i've been making dedicated effort in the payment of this emolument i'm aware that a committee in the ministry of education was set up by the governor to oversee to study to diagnose to to understand the way forward in the settlement of this retired teachers emolument payment once and for all the committee was to submit a report to the government a report that would advise the government on the best way to handle and tackle this issue 
So I don't know if the report has been submitted to the government. If it has been submitted, I will want to use this medium to advise and to request every person that is affected by the delay of the payment of this emolument to retired teachers to have patience with the government. The government is not sleeping. The governor that I know is a kind hearted gentleman. Okay, I, 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 and you I, know, excuse me, sir, and you know the, the parent the, of the governor were teachers. So the governor, I believe, I make bold to say, at place high premium, at place high important, at place high consideration in the settlement and the payment of the movement to retire teachers. Now, so I will advise all those that are affected, both the families of those alive and dead, to exercise patience with the government. Now, uh, uh, there is no need for protest. There is, there is absolutely, there is a communication there, there, there is between, absolutely going to be a disagreement are, no, with that. There has been always been a communication between the government and, 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 and the retired teachers. So I will advise that the teachers retired continue to explore this avenue of discussion, explore this avenue of negotiation, explore this avenue of talking. It would bring good result than protest. Now, now, now these are the information I need you to understand. Uh, mm. You stated that uh, you are aware of uh, a, a committee set up by the government. I'm aware. A committee has been set up by the government. Of, now, yes. this committee has been set up for over time. And I want to bring to your notice that from 2015 to 2021, this present government had not paid, reportedly not paid, anything to the, the uh, widows and next of kin of retired primary school teachers. And as it stands at this point, over 6,184 retired primary school teachers, widows and next of kin, that have been screened with a financial commitment totaling to 38 billion naira are yet to be taken care of. Now, if you, like, like you said, you're aware of the situation, you would know that most of this person happened to come from the lower class of the Nigerian situation. That's correct. And now you know that going by the poverty index in Nigeria, the average Nigerian person goes by what is less than a dollar. And for a government whose parents were reportedly teachers, for a governor whose parents were teachers, for a government who prioritizes um, alleviation of poverty, That's correct. You're one right. would expect that the number one priority of this present government should have been to settle the emoluments of these persons who have sacrificed their life, who have toiled and sweated for the present administration. Now, in as much as we know that government is continuum, mm. we also know that the government of uh, former uh, governor or Goswell Obodok Pabio had paid significantly for even more than 10 years before leaving office. And even um, from the Labour uh, Congress, from the Labour Congress in Akwaibum, said there have been arguments that if the present government of uh, Governor Domi Manjal had dedicated as little as up to 10 to 20 percent of what the previous administration had done, that we will not be having the issue of uh, this person protesting. And then I want to draw your mind again. In 2021, we had um, the, the Subeb uh, chair in Akwaibum State address the retired primary school teachers. And during that address, he has said that our uh, retired primary school teachers were going to be taken care of. Fast forward from 2020 to 2021 to 2022, we are still having the same issue. No payment release. And even when it is eventually released, the government who had before now made an agreement with this group of persons to on a monthly basis set aside some certain amount of money to settle by badges have not been committed to that agreement. Now, for a government who has not been committed and for people who have consistently written several letters of appeal to the different persons who are responsible or who ought to have taken the responsibility to ensure that these payments are made, to these persons, some who, who are in very critical health conditions, some who cannot even feed themselves, some who cannot send their children to school because they do not have access to what should be their right. How would you comment on that, sir? Yes, thank you so very much. You've just mentioned the amount, the uh, uh, ex uh, estimated amount to be paid it run into billions of naira and the process the governor the government will not just wake up one day 
and begin to make this payment. A lot of things have to be done. I'm aware the government, as I did say earlier, have set up a committee made up of very sound and technical acquibomite to advise the government on the modalities, to advise the government on how the retired teachers can be settled. I want to believe the committee is still working. I want to believe the committee is still on that project. And as soon as they are through, maybe send the report to the government. The government will pay. Even if the government cannot pay all, the government is a continuum. Our governor, the government will pay something meaningful. There is no need for protest. All right, at this, this point issue in time, of payment I'll, of a million have been that, that, sir, We'll have to get back yes. to that, but we'll just take a quick break and go to take our news on the arm. When we come back, we'll continue with the People's Parliament. Just stay with us. And at Thank this you. point in time, we're going to try to re uh, reach out to our online uh, guest, who is phoning guests to a certain um, the background for the issue within the APC. We will be speaking with Mr. Okwong Esi, who happens to be the APC national uh, leader of the year caucus in the side of the world and uh, once we are able to connect with him he will be joining us live uh, but before we went to uh, news on the hour you were talking about um you were responding to the question that bothers on the payment of the uh widows and retired primary school okay we've been joined hello good morning sir hello good morning sir morning how are you very well, thank you, sir. Um, my name is Ryan Cezette and I'm calling you live on the People's Parliament. So you are live on radio, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, sir. Um, uh, for introduction's sake, I'd like you to introduce yourself to the parliamentarian, sir. Yes, my name is Comrade Okonis. APC National Youth Focus Team and Aquarium State. All right, sir. Um, on Sunday, we had the some stalwart and um, some stakeholders within the APC in Aquibom State issue a statement, uh, jointly issue a statement, and that was beheaded by Senator Itai Nang. And according to the statement uh, they issued, which is also available on different social media platforms and, of course, different um, uh, media outlets, they said, and I quote, that the APC does not have a flag bearer for the Guba uh, position in Aquibom State and that the person of Akanodofia is not an APC member. Now, before the statement, can we recall in Aquibom State that last week, uh, the APC within Aquibom State had held, reportedly held, its uh, primaries election in which Akanodofia emerged as the flag bearer of the party. Now, in your position as the Youth Caucus leader, uh, what would you have to comment on this situation, sir? Had on not reportedly on the third life, and some of your media houses or the media houses were there. It is nice. There was an election, a primary election of the governorship, governorship primary here at Kilfi Dovoshi. And I they say it is that if we sit on the flag era, the governorship is a flag era in a primary school. And that is the that is by by. Because by now, if you see more than public, all the accounts are the state of Nigeria, and Akarofia happens to be the governor of a all right, sir. Um, we know that um, there, there has been some internal crisis within the APC, uh, within the Ostaneka name, and um, Stephen Tugek was a, a side of the faction claiming a legitimate right over who is the chairman. And of course, during that election which um, took place last week, we also had crisis. Uh, there were two known venues, Ekpobud and uh, Shegres Arena. And while we had um, INEC Resident Electoral Commission in Aquarium State Barrister Mikey Guinea at the Shegres Arena, we were told that um, some uh, persons from the INEC at the national level, as, as well as the leadership of the APC, were on grounds at Ekpobud to monitor the election that took place. Now, within this context, would you say... Um, 
that the uh, election that took place with, within the uh, without the presence of Mikey Guinea has been um, verified as being credible. He is the National Party Chairman, that's number one. Number two, he directs the, direct the INEC uh, Presidential Chairman in a private Was he supposed to be there in person or is not telling me that he's a member of this? Why is he not a member of this? Or National Chairman of APC. Now, my Kini, by showing He's supposed to send people, not him in person. For him getting to that place, that she was, he wasn't my leader. The interested party. Therefore, I want to let you understand one thing. National chairman, national secretary of safety, then committee member, committee that's supposed to conduct the, party, the, the governorship primary, and send them and give them where they are going to, and all correspondence. From national uh, uh, national APC secretariat is being received by the April road number six April road. Therefore, as far as I'm concerned, as far as the law is concerned, ultimate candidate is not recognized. And I want to let you understand that there is no faction in APC. There is no faction in APC. APC in Abuja State have only one legally and authentic chairman. A person of Obron, even Swiggum. All right, sir. Thank you. My Kikini, is it bigger than the law? Is it bigger than the law? Or is it not the law abiding citizen? Is Barista Mike, is the Barista in this? If it is the Barista in this, it should know what the, the court, the court, the court says to say and should respect that. So for my Kikini doing that, to the best of his uh, 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 belief and knowledge. Well, best known to him. But all I know is that APC in Nigeria has published the names of all that chapters, I mean, state party chairmen. And still, it's not to recognize it among the leaders. So I don't know about uh, 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 Austin, the Canada. All right, sir. Uh, before before we let you go, there's one more question I'd like to ask. Uh, during the, the, the press conference that was held by Itai, uh, Senator Itainang and uh, other Guba aspirants, uh, they had mentioned the fact that um, Mr. Kanodofia is not an APC card-carrying member and that that is uh, one of the reasons why they say he's not the flag bearer of the party. Aside from that, they also stated that uh, Mr. Kanodofia was who was a guba aspirant within the people's democratic party before his uh, defection to the apc also stood elections within the pdp which was held at the nest of champions and had been given some level of voting within that election and so uh, that by the constitution going by the electoral guidelines going by the 2022 uh, electoral act that uh, he stands disqualified to be um, standing for election within the apc what would you comment be that uh, he has the right, in his own right, he has the right to confess that for coming back home, he should be, he should be, he should be, he should have the spirit of sportsmanship. He came to the arena, he contested the election, and he stayed there too. He came to the arena of the election. He came with him into the time and came to the arena. And came and distributed his own uh, uh, pamphlet. That is campaign pamphlet. Are you hearing me? Yes, I'm with you. That means uh, that means he was there to contest the election that can and the rest of them. He should have mentioned this before the election, before the primary. But being that he lost the election, he has the right to protest or to say something. But what I'm trying to say in this sense is I can is a card carrying member of the that is one thing that's one thing people does not know. I can is a card carry member of AP. I can is a carry card carry member of AP. They should go to uh Nisuri Book, where I can come from. Open what comes from. And go and check the register of of AP in the local government and check in a far of young one. She get there and see whether I can is not a carry carry member. I think the one chairman of our country is able to prove to them that I can be a member of APC. 
Uh, coming to the scripture as amended one and all that, I can name as appeared on the PDP, the Ballot Box, the Mary Ballot Box. On that stop, I can some queen to another reason. No, the party itself as a national, as even as I can, I can remember. And here we say, the Senate, Senator, the civil Senate, then I will say that party is supreme. But when the party does not want, the party does not favor him, the party will not be supreme. That is human being. All right, thank you very much sir, for granting us your time this morning. We do appreciate you giving your voice and helping Aquabamize understand the issues within the APC. Thank you so much for coming on the People's Parliament. You're welcome, sir. You'll have a great day, sir. All right, so let's come back to you, uh, Mr. Evans. It's been an interesting um, journey within Aquabam State so far. We've had um, different issues within the APC, and we've had... Um, even within the PDP that you recall that as at last week we had two uh, Guba Prime uh, elected flag bearers within the People's Democratic Party in the person of Pastor Umoino and then we also had um, Honorable uh, Mike and Young uh, being declared also as the flag bearer and then we know that um, while there was a, a, a primary election at the Nest of Champions there was also another primary election somewhere in the wet housing and then uh, Mike and Young emerged as a flag bearer in the wet housing axis and uh, Pastor Umoino emerged as a flag bearer in uh, at the nest of champions and then we also saw a similar situation which almost played out uh, within the apc with the uh, share grace arena and the equal boat axis and then of course uh, cannot offer emerged at equal boat and we were reportedly told that um senator Odo Edere, uh, emerged as the flag bearer during the share grace arena but then over time uh, situations and information coming up said um, there was no election at the share grace arena and so there is no other second contender in this regards now, judging from what um, the APC caucus leader has said, uh, how, how do you think this will play out for a democracy in a Kwaibom state? When you want to become a member in the political party, what drives membership is what the party is for. What drives membership is what the party believes. What drives membership is what the party believes. And this is jumping. Jumping from one from one boat to the other within a week of election without understanding, without getting yourself acquainted to the identity of it. It's not going well for political development in our state in Nigeria in general. Political party these days are no more political party. I should say political platform where people use different platforms to actualize, to manifest their political vision. And this, in a short while, will be counterproductive to our political development. What, what, what happened in ABC last week was very, very sad. And I want to align myself with the position of Senator Ikaina. Because before a politically, before a political party comes there are people who have worked for the party. There are people who have suffered from it. There are people who have sacrificed their time, their resources to build the party. People build the party with the hope and intention of using the party to actualize their aspiration. 
But in a situation over the years, people have suffered to be the party. And when the time comes for them to use the party, the people's parliament, they are being swindled. And a new person is given the ticket. It is very, very sad. And it is not sending a good signal to the voting public. All right. Um, let, let's come to, to to this question. Before we get that, um, let, we just try to open the phone lines now. The numbers to call parliamentarian 0902-223-1011 or 0817-624-8565. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, parliamentarian. Okay, we'll try to take um, some comment before I come back to you with the next question. Uh, parliamentarian Innocent says, uh, I, I pray to God Almighty to revive this country to a man a touch of heart uh, a man that will have conscience for the people all right thank you very much uh, parliamentarian innocent we appreciate your comments we have a uh, parliamentarian zam excel saying mr speaker of course pdp has shown us that marginalization of the south still continues by giving the party ticket to the north after their refusal to zone the ticket to the south thank you very much parliamentarian uh, excel for joining us Parliamentarian Douglas says, uh, okay, before that, hello, good morning, Parliamentarian. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Parliamentarian. Hello, good morning. All right, the numbers to call is zero. Hello, good morning, Parliamentarian. Hello, good morning. Uh Yes, good morning. Uh, uh, my name is Dick, uh, calling from Warri. All right, welcome I, to I the I want to commend you for a wonderful job you are doing, educating, educating people and doing so well for Aquidum. But quickly, I want to tell you that this APC thing, eh, are they going there for their selfish end or how to come and rule and be good to Aquidum people? Mr. Kanimo has a mess and said that he wants to prosper Aquidum. Make a problem to be prosperous. The rural area, the city, everything. I told them for the past eight years, I've suffered. People are now eating from the dustbin. You now have corporate beggars in a problem. Today, the primary school teachers are on the street, gratuity, people dying in the hospital and all that. But the money is being spent on a frivolous activity. They said they are going to campaign, they are doing this. Whereas the main people who have this allocation, nothing has been done to them. Please. Not good GDP, APC, ADP, any part, even farmers' part. Let them bring new person. Let them come and use the money for the generality of acquired on people. Let the money for acquired on people. This money is for acquired on people, not for anything else. So please, very much. Let our animal who promises prosperity, let him come. Let GDP also bring somebody who promises prosperity, not somebody that comes and says he's going to do projects and uh, uh, living human projects. All right. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian. Hello, good morning. Welcome to the People's Parliament. Good morning. My name is Daniel Okoyo from Okobo. All right. The floor is yours, Parliamentarian. I want to take your guess on two points. One, you say that primary school teachers are committee after committee. And this is the reason we don't have leaders, because when leaders see truth and policy, it's like we don't, we don't like this kind of leaders. Primary school teacher has been suffering. My father said he's a family school, a retired primary school teacher since 2018 to this. In fact, he retired before his promotion that was due to that and it was not implemented to him. So what can he say about that? Two, he said that uh, the governor say five percent of village in uh, five percent village of in Africa, uh, does not have life. And he says it's less that than that. In AP what one in Okoba that I'm from, the the village of the former our outgoing chapter chairman of PDP, Ita Uyati, does not have life. Ibn Awaiti does not have life. Avazu does not have life. Uchiki uh, does not have life. Also, does not have life. You know, we were one that is nine village. Tell me now, if the governor is five percent, so that we not raise the eyebrow, and it is less than five percent. In my only word, and the people that don't have life is up to seventy percent, as I'm counting to you. Now, what can we? What can he say about that? I want, I want your guest to go. All right. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian. So uh, the, the question is, in his locality, for instance, there are over seven villages without light in Okobo. And um, if we have to speak going by that, there are other communities within Akwaibom State who also have the similar question, the similar problem. 
Now, how would you recommend or react to that? I want to believe that the those villages that have no light, that have not been connected to the national grid, falls within the ratio of the 5% that the governor said. Work is ongoing in the office of the senior special assistant to the governor on power. And uh, progress being made daily, progress being recorded daily, uh, before the end of this administration, uh, I, I want to believe that those villages that are yet to be connected will be connected. Having a problem is one thing. Knowing the right channel to channel your problem is another thing. I advise the public, the good people of Aquaibom said, that the right office to channel your, your power problem, your power challenges, is to the office of the governor on, on power in the person of uh, Engineer Mayonet Kodo. Send your request there, follow up with him, and, and you will be attended to. All right. So let's have patience. Let's support the government. Let's work with the government. All right. Before the end of this administration, I want to believe sincerely the five percent remaining uh, communities and villages in Akwa State to be connected uh, will be connected to national grid. Well, like I stated earlier, a lot Hello. of persons would disagree. Hello, good morning, parliamentarian. Welcome to the People's Parliament. Hello, good morning, Mr. Speaker. Yes, good morning. My the floor is yours. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you for having me. I'm calling from Oyo. All right, sir. Welcome. Now, I think, uh, yeah, your guest in the studio, um, the way he defends Udom is not sincere with himself because himself does not even believe in most of those things he says. It is a very tall order for someone to defend the present administration. In fact, I know his family will be laughing when he is trying to totter groping for what to use when we talk about when you ask him the question about the retired primary school teachers you say you care about people and you develop people and you cannot say the retired primary school teachers you are not willing to do that and you tell us that you have done so well and someone is trying to defend him on that let the government as the governor has forgotten let us remind him the effect that would have we would have in this case if he releases up to 20 billion naira to pay the deficit the money of these people who are entitled to you would see that a man who had a, 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 a leaking rule would eventually go to meet carpenter and they will go to the market the man who is going to sell the wood the money will now be, be paid to a teacher in school I mean, uh, to uh, uh, a proprietor who would now pay the teacher, the KK man who is taking this man to the market, money will change hands, and you see the economy of this state uh, 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 revive. All right, thank and you very much, Parliamentarian. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian. At this point, it will always uh, quickly go on to the BBC Pigeon News, and when we return, the People's Parliament continues. Good, Stay with morning. Good morning, Parliamentarian. The floor is yeah, yours. Nice yeah, I'm happy you are doing a great job there. Today to be my name. I call him from Nigeria. Welcome, sir. The floor is yours, yeah, Parliamentary. Yeah, this morning, quickly, I want to quickly talk about this parallel congress that we are having the political party, especially in our quiet room state. The speaker, he goes a long way to show high level of greed, selfishness, the part of these people now, because I was thinking that they should, they will have it right this particular time. But come to think of it, the situation where everybody wants to govern, it's not possible, one person at a time. At this point in time, we're supposed to look at the problems of the people. We should look at the predicament, those things that they did not do right. And it's supposed to be time of governance. Maybe they can put all these things right so that they will have something to put on the table for people to put for them. But we face the case. At this point in time, I'm calling on all of five minds to look inward and look for a credible candidate that will support us. The only problem I have has to do with the, uh, with the, the way the Congress wins. Because it is the... The delegates that are the ones that are doing that primary election for people to image. People did not really have their hands on it, but all the things, the choice of candidate that has been given to us, let's look at all the parties now and go for the ones that are very formidable that will be able to salvage the situation. People are crying based on the fact that primary school teachers are yet to be paid. All right, thank you very much. Oh, we have to let you go. Please remember to walk away from your radio set when you call in so that we can both hear ourselves and parliamentarians could get to hear you. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, good morning, parliamentarian. 
Good morning, Planet Ever. Welcome to the People's Parliament. The floor is yours, sir. This is Elder Stedman calling from. First of all, I want to thank you for reviving this program. That this program was almost dying, but with your coming, you are beginning to see the light again. I'm talking about the parallel uh, nomination in PDP. I don't think there was any parallel uh, primaries in PDP. What Bahan can be was just, um, how can you be the judge in your own case? You are the one that is the conductor, you are the one that knows the delegate, you are the one that declares yourself winner. So uh, in PDP, there was no parallel cognitive primary. We all know that the national said we should use ad hoc delegates. So why calling the statutory delegates to your house to organize? Uh, probably because you gave them both. So you just want them to fulfill the uh, um, you know, obligation of the vote that they took. So there was no parallel primary in um, Akwebu. Finally, um, the person that called about the uh, primary school teacher, um, uh, retired primary school teachers, um, um, pension that is not federal gratuity. I think, yes, I sympathize with them, but that is not the only thing that you judge the government of Udemy Manuel uh, with. He is paying it gradually. He inherited some of these things, and I think before he leaves office, he will complete it. So you don't judge a government by just one um, aspect or one area of its administration. Look at other ones and put it together, and I think. Like you said yesterday, he has scored more than 80%. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian, for joining us. Uh, we'll quickly take some more comments. Uh, Parliamentarian Kasimu says, uh, Good morning, Mr. Speaker. I earlier said, Okay. I earlier said here on this platform that Elijah Tiku will be PDP presidential candidate. The case of APC in Aquabum State, there will be no confusion among the party as far as majority of them are uh, the campaigns, everyone will want to be boss. Kasim, thank you very much, uh, Parliamentarian Kasim. Well, we'll take some calls. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, First Parliament. Good morning, welcome to the People's Parliament. The floor is yours, Parliamentarian. This is you, um, Speaker. I want to thank the PDP in the state and the federal government, federal level, for having organized a very transparent uh, uh, election process in the question of who becomes the governor and who becomes the president. I think that is an example. I always participate that. The governor and the leaders of uh, the PDP uh, maintained the status quo and make sure that what, what was needed was done rather than what we've seen in the other parts of the democracy. I, I want to say something about the issue of these primary school teachers and the next of the of the retired. I think it's about time we, when, when government comes into power. The government should look at those two major uh, sections or sector of the economy that government should deal with. For instance, the education, the industry, uh, the, 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 the economy, the, the, the agri-sector, and all of that. There are two major important sectors the government should look at, rather than making politicians more richer by the day. I think it's... All right, thank you very much, Parliamentarian. We appreciate your comment. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, welcome Good morning, to the, in the studio and other parliamentarians. Thank you for having me in today's People's Parliament. I'm Comrade in Amazon And Mr. Speaker, uh, on the PDP uh, presidential primary, uh, let me first of all congratulate the People's Democratic Party for the successful presidential primary that was uh, largely peaceful, free, and fair even though there were some uh, allegations of uh, dollars exchanging hands. I want to also congratulate the winner of the primary, Elijah T. Kububaka, for emerging victorious. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I think uh, what we saw that play out at the PDP presidential primary was that the northern part of the country took advantage of having more numbers of delegates than the southern part of the country to produce the presidential candidate of the PDP because it was one ad hoc delegate pay local government that voted, and there are more local government in the northern part of the country than the southern part of the country. Therefore, Elijah Atikova Abubakar used largely votes from northern delegates to emerge as the presidential candidate of the PDP. That is why zoning is always good, because it gives room for every part of the country to produce the president at some point in time, and it, pro it promotes national unity and cohesion 
as one zone will not continue to use their advantage in numbers to continue to produce the president of the country. Because now currently President Muhammad Buhari from the northern part of the country will have governed this country for eight years in 2023. And the People's Democratic Party now have given another northern allies to go back at their presidential ticket, hoping to govern for another eight years. So I think some of these issues can be addressed through zoning. Finally, I think uh, it is high time the state faced gratuities of retired primary school teachers and the next of him, so that these issues can be taken off their hook. This is not good image to the state government. I All right, thank you very much. Hello, good morning, parliamentarian. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Welcome to the People's Parliament. The floor is yours. Thank you for having me on today's plenary. Good morning, the guests in the studio. I am Right Honorable Defray Kenya, representing the good people of Itu and the People's Parliament. Mr. Speaker, I want to say a big congratulations to the People's Democratic Party uh, for a successful convention, national convention, to elect the flag bearer of the, uh, the party in the presidential race. I think, uh, I, in as much as I said uh, on this program, that I would not support anybody that will emerge from the party if it did not Governor Odin Emmanuel. I had my reasons, if Mr. Uh, Speaker, if you were there when I made that comment. But however, be it as it may, Mr. Speaker, I congratulate our Governor, uh, His Excellency Mr. Odom President, for coming forth in that election. Mr. Mr. Speaker, you could see from the first the second and the third person, they have been recycled politicians in Nigeria. And I think some, somebody, a space timer, just trying first uh, in the person of Governor Ode Emanuel. And he's co he had 38 votes. I mean, even if the entirety of delegates from Akwebo had put 31, it is, it is, uh, it's not easy to have vote from delegates outside your state. And he still had another seven and made it 38. I think I, I congratulate the governor, even if we did not come victorious, but in as much as the party is supreme, and as I also uh, I overheard my governor congratulate the winner, I'll have you. All right, thank you very much, parliamentarian. Hello, good morning. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, welcome to the People's Parliament. The floor is yours. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is a major. I'm calling you from the venue where we the retired primary school teachers and next of him that is a coalition I having they are going to have their own the protest today all right good, good to have you join us so what was the situation there sir yeah i'm reporting their live uh, please uh, mr speaker permit me before i answer i tell you the situation of uh, what is on ground now please uh, just permit me to answer the, one of your guests in the studio they have been listening to him he just mentioned a, a statement that the uh, uh, governor because uh, i i remember a governor, a governor is the one of the next of kin, according to because there was once a governor was in the uh, media like this. He said that he's one of the next of kin. Any time that we are going for a peaceful protest like this, we should invite him. He was on media. I, I, I'm sure you quite remember, remember that. So we are looking for avenue. Maybe we can uh, send a, a, a letter to the governor to join us. Then the, I remember once a governor said that uh, 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 this, uh, this issue is a national issue. That uh, is not a state issue, but I, I'm still complaining. What happened to Brownu State? That if you can check the the their location of that state, but the governor Zulu released huge amounts of money and cleared this issue. Then, the, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I think it will be a very a, a very shock for for a PDP in Akwaibum to see to lose over six thousand retired primary school child and next of king vote. I think I think uh, that should be a very huge. Uh, 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 not a success for them because all right all right, right let, let's focus more on what is happening what is the situation of the protest right now uh, yes uh, mr uh, mr speaker uh, as i said i'm at the venue now um and some of the uh, retired primary school children are next of king we are here at the uh, ck the uh, uh, primary school there is very very sympathetic for what i'm seeing on ground there are many those that are diabetic those that are uh, hypertensive many are inside even kk they can't even bring them out so the, the situation is so so for, for to see someone that served the state for over 35 years, but they, they are in total jeopardy. All right. So what uh, I'm saying uh, there is not even encouraging. Are there are there government officials presently at the scene to address the widows and um, next of kin, the retired primary school teachers who are out to protest? 
Actually, as I said, Mr. President, we are just uh, converging as the CK is. Maybe just 10 o'clock, we are going to move because many many people are on their way. You know, many of them, they are coming from a very rural area. They paid their way down here. Many of them, they will pay over 30000 naira. So we are waiting for them to join us. But at the situation now, what is on the ground, many of the retired primary teachers and their next of kin are converging as CK is... Uh, 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 primary schools by virus school. but the, the situation is very very sympathetic for to see the the, the level and the homogeneous uh, situation of, of right. what people that serve the set up all right uh, at, at this in point in time i uh, would want to know from seekers where would the uh, retired primary school uh, teachers be protesting through are you going to the government house or you're going to the state secretariat where exactly would the procession be headed to uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, I think it's not the state secretary that is going on. I think it's the government of a quiet state. So we are heading to the government house at this moment. Uh, uh, that, is, that, is, that is the plan for now on ground. All right, so sir. we are waiting for others to join us very soon. But I will share the, the pictures and the pose of what people are passing through in the in the platform of the Planet FM. It's, it's very, very sympathetic what right. I'm on ground now. Thank you very much. Uh, we will be coming around to monitor the situation and also get first-hand information. Thank you for reporting live from the scene of, of, of the protest. We do appreciate Thank you very much, Mr. President. All right, that is the People's Parliament, and that was somebody reporting live from the the scene of the uh, planned protest for retired primary school teacher. Let's quickly talk to some callers again from the parliamentarians. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, Mr. Sugar. Welcome to the People's Parliament. The floor is yours. Yeah, my name is Victor Bobo from I sincerely want to congratulate Vicky, uh, even if she do not secure the flag to be the flag bearer, but I want to congratulate him because he has pulled down enough number that had it been, it wasn't from the north, he could have been the next president in Nigeria. So I congratulated him very well. For His Excellency, Governor Udo Emmanuel, personally, my view, I would have advised him to stay out from that uh, uh, contest because if you see the situation of things in our private state, you understand that sincerely in so many aspects, like insecurity, like now the hospitality of the state, you can you now walk in Uyu, the capital. Almost every street has its own dump site. Is that how he wants to lead Nigeria? Is that the way to lead people? Now, now you see, drainage are now filled up. You cannot be filled with drainage. When now it's pouring now, what are we entering people's house? Is that how you intend to leave the nation? So I, I, do, I even I even wonder how he managed to get a, 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 a vote. I thought he would get two votes or one. All right, thank you very much, Parliamentarian. We quickly take some comments from the social media platform. And um, Parliamentarian Henry Wise says, Good morning, Mr. Speaker. The place of equity and fairness in Nigerian politics is only on paper. In the reality, it is a matter of interest. Governor Odo Emmanuel did not perform badly. He has succeeded in gaining more experience from Nigerian politics. There's always a next time. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian Henry. And uh, Parliamentarian Christian Gabriel says, uh, Good morning, Mr. Speaker, and others there in the studio. Mr. Speaker, I want to congratulate Akanodofi for winning the APC flag bearer. I'm Christian Gabriel. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian, for joining us. Uh, Parliamentarian Jen Yusen says, uh, Akanodofi is currently the APC flag bearer and a member of the party. Tainang should accept the reality on ground. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian, for joining us. And Parliamentarian Samuel Iwok says, uh, Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Senator Itainang needs to calm down and support Akanodofia. Nobody owns the political party. In addition to that, I want to say that Atiku won the presidential ticket, but Governor Odomi Manjo won our heart for producing 36 votes, uh, plus the FCT, plus one year, 38. Thank you very much. We appreciate your comment. And the last comment uh, from uh, Parliamentarian Udeme Mega says, uh, Mr. President, the governor's space watch, as usual, very far from the reality on ground. Most of the much talked about industries are not there or functional in reality. 21 smart buildings lying fallow, ETC. For APC, if, it, if at all they are serious, out of court settlement is what will save the party from the um, problem that might possibly arise. Finally, always read people's names in full. This is people's parliament, and all protocols must be observed. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian uh, Udeme Mega Ebu. Um, corrections noted. I'll always ensure to take everybody's name in full. Thank you for joining us. Hello, good morning, Parliamentarian. Good morning, Madam. Good morning. The floor is yours. This is actually 
from Moron Nation. Mr. Speaker, please permit me to get parliamentarian staff motion that we should I was not able to make an and can you please uh, put your mouth where your speaker is so we can get to hear you? I can barely hear you, sir. Hello, Mr. Speaker. Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Speak on. Okay. Um, the, the recent concluded um, primary from the APC um, RAP uh, is, is something we are looking after. And so for the trainers to come and get that uh, I cannot hear, but it's not the of the uh, of all the foundation because he was there on that venue contesting the election with Akarudovia. Why does he not want to get here to this statement? It shows the excess of greediness, which is so uh, an attitude of partnership when you fail. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian, for joining us. We appreciate your comment. Uh, we'll take some two more calls uh, before we call it up. And then good morning, Parliamentarian. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Good morning. Welcome. The floor is yours, Parliamentarian. Yes, this is Honorable Williams from Uyo. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I am very, very shocked this morning that the people that politicians have used poverty and illiteracy as a political tool to suppress are the ones congratulating politicians that we heard that it was allegedly a dollar rent during PDP presidential uh, aspirant uh, nomination and all that. You see, Mr. Speaker, $35,000, I converted it and it was $7,500,000. And that was what was alleged that Atiku shared. Wiki was alleged to have shared $15,000. It is this Naira uh, dollar reign that people are calling to congratulate them. See what uh, happened in Portacos that more than 30 people were stampeded because they were going for food. During the answers, they said that they, the, the politicians needed uh, palliatives. And look at, it is these people that ordinary citizens that are suffering and congratulating. Is it not shameful? Nigerians, when will you people learn? These politicians are not up to 1 million and up to 200 million people are being subjected to abject poverty and people are congratulating them. Oh, Mr. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian, for your contributions. Uh, we did hear reportedly there were rains of dollars at the, the venue of the PDP presidential elections and we're also aware that um, uh, there was a stampede in Port Harcourt yesterday as a result of a charity event that was organized by the church and we know that the uh, police authorities have uh, reportedly arrested the church uh, officials who were responsible for that event. Uh, this happens to be would happen to be the last caller on the People's Parliament. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, um, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, welcome to I the People's to Parliament. Thank you very much. Please, did I remain 
Um, you have to tell us your name, parliamentarian. Please let me just remember my name. I'm still quite busy. Uh, because I don't always talk, but when it comes to it, like this, I think. Uh, first, let me just congratulate uh, my state dog, Odumi Man, for him just gathering those food. I think maybe if at all he has been focusing on the presidential ambition, maybe he can add some food than what he has. Uh, because uh, whenever he wanted to contest, I think he needs to go around to make uh, some inquiries from us, especially the South South State, like uh, Cross River, who is uh, one of the other states to acquire with uh, state here. Then, uh, uh, then goes to either one like that, uh, other state like that, especially that have not provided to give the uh, presidential candidate. But all of a sudden, he felt to do that because of the the issue uh, in the acquirement that he wanted to bring out his candidate to succeed him. So that notwithstanding, for him, for the first time to gather his head food, I think, is, uh, I say congratulations. And I just want to use this opportunity to advise acquiring people because sometimes we use this our market for our things, irrespective of anything. I'm not a politician. I don't stand for anybody. But the way we condemn the work of this man I, I personally uh, credited uh, kudos to all the governors that have come uh, as, as the past uh, governor in the trade dispensation, starting from uh, Obong Victor Cha, Gosul of Mario, and Ejino Dume Manuel. They have tried to make sure that they keep acquired in a better position. If criticism, false criticism or wrong criticism would not sort out the matter. If you don't like a person, then you need to see a, a good side of him. Dume Manuel never sees him. His inception. Uh, he has been able to try his best, but you, you know, you will not be able to satisfy the masses. That is what the, the advice I, I can give to Kwaibon people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Parliamentarian, for joining us. Uh, we do appreciate uh, That happens to be our last caller. And let me quickly come back to you for your last comment on the different issues. In just 60 seconds, uh, get to touch light on the, the three, three motions that we had on the floor of the House today. Yes, I want to uh, celebrate and uh, congratulate our our lovely and amiable governor, uh, Mr. Udom Gabriel Emmanuel. Has broken the seal of mediocrity. It has broken the limitation that limits us from you know uh, going into national politics by the courage, the confidence the governor have demonstrated through the uh, Dakada Creek, venturing into uh, the turbulent uh, uh, Nigerian uh, presidential uh, primaries, has also uh, helped to embolden and also help to, to, to give us the encouragement, the guts to go into, you know, national politics. I want to celebrate the governor because uh, uh, after today, after now, many people will go into, you know, national politics. I want to also uh, celebrate and uh, congratulate uh, His Excellency, the former Vice uh, President of Nigeria, uh, His Excellency uh, Tiku Abubakar, for the mandate uh, that the party have given to him to, uh, you know, fly the, the flag of the party. All right, thank you. PDP have come to stay. PDP will stay and PDP will succeed in the next year, 2023 uh, yeah. uh, national election. You're beginning to sound like a PDP man. Thank you very much, Otwe Kong Ivanza Panabon, for joining us today. And uh, Parliamentarian Itapa and Parliamentarian Anthony Oyoyo, Parliamentarian um, Nsebong Udokpan, thank you for your comment on the social media platform. We appreciate you. And this is the size of our package on today's plenary session on the People's Parliament coming to you from Planet 101.1 AFM. My name is Frank Cesar and it's been an amazing time uh, doing this with you. Let's do this again tomorrow, same time, same station. And of course, get to talk about issues of urgent public importance. Uh, right about now, we will be heading to the news decks where we'll be taking a news at the top of the hour coming up at 10 o'clock. Thanks for being there.